Hello, everyone. We are inviting you to celebrate Black History Month by celebrating our partners and allies that we work with on a daily basis. And we know that every day that we have individuals that are creating history or her stories um, by showing up for our communities in different ways. And we are wanting to highlight Solicitor Stripling today for the amazing work they're doing as our Solicitor General in DeKalb County. And They've been an amazing partner. Um, you know, the office has been an amazing partner by supporting Raksha, but also having us come in and do trainings. And I think that openness is so important so that we can serve every DeKalb citizen. But there's been some amazing projects. Um, Solicitor Stripling, when I read your bio, I, I also, I was so fascinated to know that you grew up in DeKalb County. And then here you are now serving, well, you were the Chief Assistant District Attorney and work with ch uh, ch crimes against children for many years. And now you're our Solicitor General and you've created some really innovative programs. But number one, I gotta celebrate being a DeKalb County, uh, <laughs> right. a DeKalb uh, County resident or growing up in DeKalb County and going to DeKalb County high schools because I also grew up in DeKalb County. So I was so excited to see that. You know, it is, and thank you for having me here today. I certainly appreciate it. And it is an honor to be here. Um, and one of the things that I celebrate is I represent a county um, and I serve a county that is so dear and close to my heart. I've, I'm from here. I tell people I live, play and work here. And I've been here pretty much my entire life. And so I know the heart, the heartbeat of DeKalb. I know how diverse we are. Um, I know what what resources we have and, and um, love serving the people of DeKalb County. So thank you. And I know you've had some innovative programs to meet the community where it's at. One of them, of course, is the um, Not In My DeKalb. Can you tell us a little bit more about Not In My DeKalb? Well, Not In My DeKalb was an initiative started in 2019. And I was so privileged and honored to receive funding from both the CEO, Michael Thurman, as well as one of the commissioners, uh, Commissioner Marita Davis Johnson, who uh, provided funding to the office so that we can add resources specifically to victims of domestic violence. Of course, uh, my office prosecutes the misdemeanors that happen in this county. But we were the first to actually put an advocate located at the precinct to specifically address the misdemeanor DV cases. And what we saw was such a, you know, this ability to, to contact our victims, to the ability to reach out immediately, um, perhaps right after an arrest or within hours after an arrest, um, and to go ahead and get them resources. You see, that's such a critical time. Mm -hmm. And we know how important it is for our victims to hear from us. And so it allowed us the opportunity to place victim advocates. We started in South Precinct. Uh, we've now expanded to East Precinct. So they're there serving not only our victims, they're also assisting our officers because our officers are getting called out to some of the same locations repeatedly. And we saw the importance of that even on the misdemeanor level. So I'm truly honored to have that program. We called it Not In My DeKalb. I was taking ownership and saying, you know, this is, we want to change what happens in DeKalb County. So we called it Not In My DeKalb. And I love it. And I love it because um, having started out as a victim advocate in the city of Atlanta, that um, in municipal court, right? You saw the importance of being able to interact with survivors from the very beginning and not waiting until there's a court case. And that intervention is so important. So, you know, I have a soft place because it reminds me of how I started doing the work and how important those first interactions are. And so uh, you started in South Precinct. Is there a reason why you started in South Precinct? And, and that might go into like, is it about serving the community that is often not served? Absolutely. Um, and to be perfectly honest, at that time, we looked simply at the numbers. And we were looking at the calls and the repeated calls. And we knew that South Precinct was a place that we can start making the change. We knew we wouldn't end there, right. but um, it, is a, it is an area that is underserved. 
We know that we're committed to serving that community and of course serving all of DeKalb County, but um, we just started really with the numbers. And um, that's how we moved from South Precinct and then decided to make our second location at East Precinct. Okay. So that goes into why is talking about race so important for us? And especially in a time where um, there's a whole um, conflict between race and the criminal justice system. And I imagine that's a tough place to be in and to navigate at times. It is. One of the questions that I'm, I'm asked quite often is, you know, how did you get into prosecution? Um, you're African-American, you're a woman who's prosecuting. Um, I've spent most of my career in prosecution and you're also in a county that you have been in your, pretty much your whole life. Um, but what I know is how important it is that when someone enters that courtroom, they feel that they are going to be treated fairly, respectful. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to feel as if we took the time to make a fair and equitable decision. And so, um, and when you talk about race and we know that DeKalb is, you know, certainly a diverse county, um, we're committed to ensuring that anyone who walks into a courtroom, whether it be a defendant um, or a victim, now survivor, mm -hmm. um, understands that we recognize how important it is. We understand what role it has played historically in our system. Um, we know how it still plays a role socially, economically, financially. Uh, we can go down the list of every, in every aspect of society, race plays a role. And so it's important and we will not ignore it. And we applaud that. And, and you know, that's so important for us to do so that everyone has access to justice. Um, to healing. And I know, I mean, this is such a critical time because, you know, we just got the um, the ruling about the hate crimes with the Ahmaud Aubrey case, right, just today. And, and why, like, can we get justice for every, every person and right. regardless of race? And there were so many barriers right there. That's a great example of where there were a number of barriers in the beginning and then the community spoke right. up. <laughs> to ensure justice, right? And in 2022, we're still talking about it. Which is which, a shame. Which means it's, it's still out there and it's still an impact and we still have work to do. Are there any dreams you have in what you want to change or what you want the community to know that we can address, the, you know, the cultural needs or even the racial needs of our community? Wow. Uh, dreams you know you, when you said that word it just kind of stopped me where I was thinking um and I've, I've always said this I, I I dream of a day where everyone feels that they are treated fairly I dream of a day where we you, you talked about access to justice Mm -hmm. Is that our, you know, everything that people feel as they walk into that courtroom, no matter what happens, that this is, this was fair. I was treated fairly. And I think we do a good job with it in the cab. Um, but I, I dream of a day where that happens everywhere. Um, I always tell people, you know, I have two African-American sons and it, it is never a question in my mind that what we see on TV, what we see has happened in certain communities. Um, our African American men can find themselves in situations that they are being harmed. So my dream has always been that my children never see the inside of a courtroom unless they're following their mommy's footsteps. <laughs> um, whether either as a victim or certainly as a defendant. So my dream is, is that we are always displaying integrity, justice, fairness for all. And the day that we don't have to talk about the racial um, implications and things that are being done simply because of race, like in Ahmed Aubrey. Yeah, and that's so powerful. I mean, going up into Cab County, this has been a dialogue for so long. 
and you want to make sure that all of our communities, you know, get the same resources, the same access to justice, the same, yeah, just the same um, ability to feel safe. It's so important. One of the things I love to talk about is that you came up with a unique fundraiser, Dancing with the Stars. And I've really been missing it because of the pandemic. Um, and it was a great way for you to show support of the shelters, but also highlight the nonprofits in the community. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about that amazing creation that, <laughs> or, or the amazing um, it, it program? Was you know, I, and you're, it's funny you say you miss it because I do too. One of the highlights of this job has been able to, we, we partner, we partner, we have wonderful organizations and we get to highlight them. So when people say, hey, where can I, you know, I have someone or do you know, I, I'm like, you know them too. You know these organizations too. And so um, my first year in office, 2017, was the first year of Dancing with the Cap Stars where we brought in, I think that year we had 11 dancers. Um, only 10 competed. Mr. Thurman did not compete. He was just the highlight of the show. But um, we, we asked individuals, local, what we consider our local celebrities, um, to come out and just participate. And it's, it looks a lot like, you know, what most people would see on TV. And they danced and practiced for months. Can you imagine asking some of our elected officials to take time out of their very busy schedule or business owners, um, do something for free, then donate some money. <laughs> and we're all doing it for a good cause. And it was so much fun. Um, the competitions were real. They were fierce. Uh, you know, I think I, I saw some people who, you know, at the end, I was a little worried if everybody was OK, but um, it was we had it for three years. Um, and of course, we have not had it since the pandemic. If we are able to bring it back, we certainly plan on it. So we're, we're working on trying to get it back. But out of our safety and the safety of the community, we didn't feel that we should have had it within the last two years. No, but, but I just love. Yeah such an opportunity and we raised the last year we raised over fifty thousand dollars and and of course the funds go to two of the shelters in DeKalb County which I think is is amazing um yeah. yes I, I love that event I love dancing and I love watching performances so that's one of my favorite events and I love that y'all have done it and it's a great way to bring a diverse community together for it is a good one, cause. it was one of the few times you would see everyone Music brings a lot of people together. I love music. Mm -hmm. um, it was an opportunity to bring everyone together, laughing and dancing. The first year, um, the Porter, Porter Sanford, they were putting us out because they said we were stay, people would stay afterwards just to continue to talk about it and laugh. And so what you saw was the best of DeKalb County, which is the opportunities for everyone to come together and enjoy themselves through music. Mm, for, a good, for a good cause for and a good. By, we had um we had the food was even donated mm -hmm. if you think about it every nobody mind donating to a good cause so it was it was phenomenal it was, it was such an honor to have that event but it also has to say something about your ability to bring people together and i thank you um and i accept that because i do i try to bring people together and I think that it is part of my job to bring people together. I think that that's how we work and we work better together. We learn better together. Mm -hmm. um, we have experiences that, that nobody else would know about unless we get together. So I think that um, part of my role, even though my role is as a lawyer and as a prosecutor and as an administrator, bringing people together. And that's that's how we'll heal heal the world, right? If we can bring, bring bring ourselves together, put things aside, and, and see each other's humanity, right? That's that's the big part of, of this work. Um, again, I am I am so thrilled to honor you and to highlight you during Black History Month. Um, 
and I have to show so much gratitude for the ways that you have worked with Raksha, whether it was donating the care packages to our clients, um, but also inviting us to come in and train on uh, different topics. What a gift and what a beautiful relationship. And, and I'm just so grateful for the ways that you continue to show up for community, um, which is so important. So thank you so much for that. I don't know if there's any lasting words you want to leave us with. Just simply thank you for having me. And thank you for recognizing um, this month. Thank you for, for acknowledging. And, and thank you for always being a partner. Um, it's, it's sometimes, you know, it's funny how there are times where you come together and it's because there's an issue. It's times where you come together because you are trying to resolve an issue. But I, I so appreciate Raksha because you guys have done such a, just a phenomenal job in training and educating the staff that I work with every single day. So thank you. And thank you for having me here today. Thank you. We hope everyone um, celebrates the amazing uh, Black community members in their lives and, and, and acknowledges the great work and that we continue to honor and love all of our partners um, and honor their histories and their contributions to our community because that is the only way we're going to um, seek equity and justice and belonging for all of us.